Hi, I'm Brian O with Elisis, and I want to show you how to get started with the Elisis Vortex and Ableton Live Lite Elisis Edition. First thing you're going to want to do is download the controller map from our Elisis website. After you've installed your controller map, you're going to want to set it up in the Ableton Preferences. On a Mac, this is under Live Preferences. On a PC, you'll find this under Option Preferences. First, you're going to want to select MIDI Sync on the left, and under Control Surfaces, select the Vortex. Next, you're going to want to make sure that Vortex Port 1 is selected for your input, your output. Next, you're going to want to ensure that both Track and Remote are enabled for Vortex Input, Vortex Port 1. You're also going to want to hit the Audio tab and verify that your sound card is configured. Now you can close the window. Now that we have the Vortex set up in Ableton, let's add some instruments. Just click on the arrow on the left and select Instrument Rack. Here you'll see a whole category of different instrument types for you to select. Let's choose Synth Bass and Smoked Analog. Drag this over on top of the MIDI track. Next, you're going to want to select the Vortex as your MIDI input. From here, you're going to go MIDI From, choose Vortex Input, Vortex Port 1. The keyboard sends over MIDI Channel 1, so you're going to want to select MIDI Channel 1. And now you have an instrument on your keyboard. Great. Now let's add a drum rack. Above Instrument Rack, you'll see Drum Rack. You're going to want to go to Kit to select a whole drum kit. Let's pick the 808. Click, hold, and drag. You're going to want to set this up with the Vortex as well. Select the Vortex as the MIDI instrument. And you're going to want to select MIDI channel 10 for the drum pads. Now, your drum pads are mapped to make drum sounds. If you want to play both instruments at the same time, you're going to want to record enable both. Hold command and select the record button. Now you can play both instruments at the same time. Great. Now that we have set up our instruments, let's talk about the control map. The three knobs here will automatically control the first three knobs of a device on the software. To do this, select a device and look for the little blue hand. This will indicate that these three knobs are controlling the first three knobs of your device. You can see moving this first knob will change the first knob on the software. The second knob will control the second knob and the third will control the third knob. If you want to select a different device to edit, Instead of having to manually remap everything, you can click a new device, look, click on it here, look for the blue hand, and now you are editing the parameters of this device using these three knobs. Let's talk about custom MIDI mapping. To do this, you're going to want to hit Options, Edit MIDI Map, select a control that you would like to map. In this case, let's map the filter frequency. Select a control on screen and move the control on the hardware which you would like to map. Let's do the ribbon mode 2. Hit option, edit MIDI map to exit MIDI map mode and now the filter frequency is being controlled by the ribbon. Of course you can custom map any of the hardware controls to the software. You can map any three of the ribbon controls, the accelerometer, the knobs, the pads, even the keys themselves. Out of the box, the start stop transport control is automatically mapped to Ableton Live. I've set up a simple drum beat to demonstrate. You press start and stop, you can start and stop your sequences using the control. So that wraps up our video on using the Elisis Vortex with Ableton Live Lite Elisis Edition.